welcome to Expedition Networking, a special segment of the Networking RX podcast. I'm Frank Egan, founder and president of Amspirit Business Connections and your host for this program. For those of you who are familiar, on the Networking RX podcast, we share information and have conversations with experts, such as authors, researchers, and social scientists. And all of these programs are aimed at helping you learn how to become better at building professional relationships and understanding why they work. In this Expedition Networking segment, however, we're going to bring on successful entrepreneurs and unique professionals and explore their networking adventure and learn how they used relationships to create lasting success. Today on Expedition Networking, we have Paul Banks. Paul is a 15-year veteran of the retail sector, having spent a good deal of his career discovering what makes people decide to make what he terms are bizarre and irrational choices. Um, we've probably all done them. He knows why. Um, he's been involved heavily in customer experience and employee engagement for many years, as well as leading teams under high pressure for long periods of time. He's an avid networker, um, and he's had a real baptism uh, by fire this last year, growing a large, a large LinkedIn following in a in a very short period of time. Um, Paul was Paul's in the UK. Um, he was introduced to me by Simon Towns. I believe Simon introduced us. He, every, pretty much everybody I know over there, Simon's kind of a connecting point. Um, but we had a great conversation about just how networking has played out in. Uh, in your world. Anyhow, Paul, welcome to the program. Hi, Frank. Thanks for having me on. Great to be here. So how did you, how did you do this? Uh, well, I guess let's step back. Um, what are these bizarre and ir- irrational choices that people make? So I spent a lot of my time um, working through retail in lots of different capacities um during that time i also spent about 10 years as a volunteer police officer for the uh for the local police force and i got to the end of that time and and i kind of sat back and and looked at it all and i wondered what connected everything together why why did i enjoy all of the jobs that i enjoyed what why did i do the jobs that i did and i didn't really understand that until i mean you know in the last year or so was that actually the connecting thing between all of those was i enjoy understanding why people um, make the decisions that they do and and put myself in positions where I can find that out is where I ended up in those roles and um, so for me I spent a good chunk of my time in retail in the loss prevention world um, so understanding um, why people steal from the business whether that's internal customers whether it's external customers um, and combined with my sort of um, eye for detail and, and cynicism, let's say, from the police force, mm-hmm. um, that became a really successful career path. Um, and one of the things that I found was that the business tended to focus on catching and detaining the people who were who were causing the, uh, the, the loss to the business, but actually very few people were focusing on why that happened in the first place. Um, so part of my interest was if we can remove the... Um, the causes for them to move to this behavior, then we're doing the right thing by the employee. We're doing the right thing by the business. And ultimately we're saving ourselves a pile of cost in the middle in not just of um, preventing the stock or the cash from being stolen, but also preventing um, the replacement of staff members, the risk of litigation, your uniform, your training contracts, all the rest of the cost that comes with it. Um, So yeah, I spent a good deal of my time trying to find the patterns of behavior and, um, you know, depending on the the store, depending on the demographic area, there's lots of indicators that sort of that point that out. And as time went on, that kind of spread to other things. And you know, I sort of like sort of got to thinking, you know, um, if there's if there's common sets of traits of indicating that sort of behaviour, then then we must do other things. Um, and as I came to join the modular analytics company last year. Um, the business heavily uses behavioral science and behavioral design as part of what they do um, in communicating what is essentially very complex technology to um, make it accessible to people who, who maybe aren't analytical in nature or aren't a data scientist or a, or a machine learning engineer. Um, and that fascinated me because it, it fit very well with what I'd done previously. Um, and so, yeah, for me, it's been about kind of understanding um, those behavioral science 
elements that that make up the things that we do every day you know you you we kind of sit and i was i was actually on a webinar about this yesterday for uh, the, the contact center network and discussing how that kind of impacts on things and um you know reading books like thinking fast and slow by daniel kahneman was really a, a big turning point on that um ripple by jez groom and to name a couple of others but yeah there's there's lots of very fascinating books on behavioral science and it's still a very young science in itself we're still only really starting to understand comprehensively the the way that the human brain works um for for what is seemingly to, to you and i like a very um disorganized way of doing things there's there's always a common element underneath that that kind of underlines why we're doing it in the first place and it's yeah. it's usually something to do with evolution yeah, no, I, uh, you know, I, uh, um, that whole, you know, uh, th- you know, the, the book Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow Ripple, I have not read, but it, it, it was fascinating. And I've just come to the opinion that people aren't irrational. They just appear irrational. We just don't know what's kind of going on behind the scenes. Um, and once you start to peel back the layers of, okay, this is, you know, this is how this is happening. Um, it starts to make a whole lot more sense. And I, when I, I was on a podcast last night and I was being interviewed and I just shared with them that, you know, listen, you know, the industrial revolution is about 200 years old civilizations, maybe a couple thousand years old, but the human existence is tens of thousands of years old. Um, And we just, we, we like to think because now we have electricity that all the old rules are out the door and they're not, you know, we're still very tribal. We're very community, uh, community oriented as we've always been. Um, yeah. And we're on the lookout for things that uh, can help us survive um, to, to carry on our gene pool, if you will. Um, and I know that makes people feel a little bit uh, um, uneasy to think about, you know, Hey, we're smart now. We do. We don't. We don't resort to these sorts of things. You know, we're just animals. Um, when it really comes down to it. Um, so, how did you grow the LinkedIn profile? I know it's part of. Um, so I think I think it was I think it was a, a natural evolution of where I've been. So I spent fifteen years in what was uh, traditionally a very siloed business, a very siloed role. Um, but deep down, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a big people person. I'm a big like I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert by nature. But I'm very curious about people. I'm very open to meeting people. I'm very open to saying yes to things. Um, sometimes to my own detriment. <laughs> it's something I'm working on. But um, I think when I got the opportunity to come over to um, to we just call it T Mac. Um, because nobody can say the full name too many times in one podcast. Um, so when I got the opportunity to come over to TMAC, um, I was about building up their go-to-market strategy for retail uh, and how data science and analytics could, could operate in that space. Um, and part of that role was kind of building out a network and building out you know, potential customers, potential partners, potential um, advisors. And the more I did it, the more I enjoyed that part of the role. And I, and it, you know, I start to thrive on doing that and, and looking for the next challenge. You know, who can I get a meeting with that, that kind of is more and more out there, you know, like rather than thinking of the traditional businesses, like the groceries and supermarkets, can I, you know, can I get a meeting with, you know, the, the director of loss prevention for Disney? Um, mm-hmm. You know, just being a little bit more wild every time I did it. Um, and it was great because, you know, I'd get in front of those guys and, and you kind of dramatize it in your head, but actually they're just you and me with a different job. They're yeah. just people very nice people and 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 it surprised me how many of those people were open to networking opportunities um i think i was quite fortunate that loss prevention was something i focused on really early in that career because loss prevention um community is a very very um close-knit community on both sides of the pond um, everybody knows each other everybody kind of cycles around through the different businesses they've been in different businesses they're very open to sharing their experiences and their knowledge and they're very welcoming to new people who have got you know good set of standards in that in that space so i absolutely thrived in that environment um and then yeah to your point probably about three or four months ago um i met simon um through a through a linkedin post i think it was um we got talking Simon set me up with a meeting. 
um, we sat and discussed and Simon was very different to anybody else who I'd, who I'd networked with because he, he actively um, gave me links to people who, you know, I hadn't asked for any connections. I didn't go on with any intent to sort of ask for support or anybody in particular. Um, and so I was curious to see where that went, you know, and I, and I met a few of the people that, that, that Simon had suggested. And then I met some people that they suggested and I found that everybody in that, that world was kind of working in the same way. They were more than happy to introduce me to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I start to connect the dots a little bit, so then, you know, start following the same thing myself, you know, I'd start to see, oh, well, actually I know somebody who can do that and reciprocated. And then what I found at the end of it all was actually, you know, to the point you spoke about earlier on, you know, the indirect route of networking, as long as you're, you're going into it with your heart and mind in a curious role, uh, where a way that you can support other people as opposed to trying to get into it for yourself always, always comes back and repairs in multiples in, in, in lots of different ways. Um, and it's not only that, but it's, it's also enriching, you know, I sleep mm-hmm. easy on the night because I know I've helped people. Um, yeah. I worked as a volunteer police officer for 10 years because I like helping people. That's, that's part of what, who I am. I can't, you know, if I see a fight, I run towards it, not because I want to get involved in the fight, but because I don't want people to get hurt. Like I, I've got the natural call to separate them. Um, and I guess it's the same sort of thing. Like I really enjoy helping people and I'm fortunate enough that I can do that as part of my job whilst still finding business opportunities for myself as a result of it. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my journey. It's, it's been a, it's been a bit of a watershed for the last year, year and a half. Really enjoyed yeah. it. You know, when we first talked, you shared a story about, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to encourage you to kind of share the story, uh, for the listeners. Um, about your boss really pushing you to, you know, stop this networking nonsense, just go get our damn clients kind of a mentality, right? That's uh, probably, he didn't say yeah. it like that, but yeah. that kind of, yeah. you know, that. Yeah, so. we, we, we still kind of have that back and forth now and again. Um, it, it's, a, yeah. So uh, I guess to anybody who doesn't really network in that way, um like it takes it takes all sorts to make a business tick right so yeah you've got to have your networkers you've got to have your people who are um kpi led who are you know will push the business forward who were who were you know drive that business forward no matter what um me and him like we're, we're two very different people but we gel together really well so we're a very very tight-knit team um and we think the world of each other but you know his his focus on lead generation for me was, you know, I want you to go out. I want you to be like a snipe rifle you know, I want you to find the right people and I want you to get in touch with them. And I want you to, you know, break through the barriers and, and, and let's get some sales put in. And I love that energy I'll, and, it, and it's, and it's with the best of intentions, but that's not the way networking works. Um, you know, it's not the way sales works anymore if it, if it ever was. Um, right. And whilst you can have a certain amount of luck with, finding the right people who are in the buying window at the right time, who want your product, who are the right people to talk to, who will open the door and actually speak to you. Um, They're few and far between in the right Mm -hmm. position. But actually sometimes the better route in is by getting to know the guy's hairdresser (laughs) who can, who can make warm recommendation because they've met you, they trust you, they like you and they're more than willing to open that door and and introduce you. Um, And once I've done that a couple of times, um, you know, we we started to see the benefits of doing it that way, and and it's still kind of a little bit of a bit of a discussion point between us. You know, what like why are you doing this and why are you doing that? Just you got to just trust me. I trust the process. The process yeah. works. Just have faith in it, and and we'll we'll get there. And you know, those those connections that I was talking to six months ago, um, you know, it, like they've put me in touch with so much more business than I could ever reach by myself. And they're going out and spreading the good word about what I do and who I am. And they'll happily, you know, um, talk to people about the warm points that they found from the conversation, which is much easier than trying to go up to somebody on a cold email or a cold phone call and go, hey, do you want to hear about all this stuff? Mm-hmm. It's much and more we get, powerful. Yeah, well, we get those all the time. Um, and the reality is most people don't want to hear about their stuff. Uh, buy a script. Right? Yeah. Oh, it is. And we'll it's, uh, avoid it. It, well, I, you know, I got one yesterday. Hey, you have time tomorrow at one o'clock. Well, no, I mean, I just think that's, um, that's just presumptive that 
yeah. you know, A, you're looking for successful people to talk to, to think that somebody in less than 24 hours notice is going to have an opening on, that fits your particular cal- calendar is very uh, short-sighted at best, ignorant at worst. Um, but um, I, I, I guess let me ask you this, and I'll, then I'll give my answer. In your heart of hearts, because I totally agree with your approach, I do. But in your heart of hearts, are there ever moments where you're like, where you, you, know, you talk about having faith, having faith in the process. Do you ever kind of question it? It's like, oh, geez, did I take the wrong turn here? Um, um, no, okay. no, honestly not. No, I think maybe, maybe, maybe if I'm being honest, maybe back in the day when I first started doing it, yep. there were some periods there where I thought I'm potentially wasting my time here. Like, I don't know where this is going to go, but like, I've, I've been uh, involved in the fitness side of things, you know, like my, my, my partner's a qualified personal trainer. We've, you know, we've spent the best part of the last 10 years um, going to gyms. Um, we've done CrossFit and all sorts of different things. Um, and we know from that, that it, it, and it's a very similar process. If you want to lose weight, it, you can't turn up to the gym for three days and, and wait to see the, the weight drop off. You've got to keep going back. You've got to keep posting on LinkedIn. You've got to keep putting content out there. You've got to reach out to people. You've got to play the process, be yeah. patient and see what comes back. Um, and I think the other side of things like uh, that I took from retail was the resilience, you know, um, don't be, don't be down because somebody says no, they're, they're arrogant about it or, or whatever. Like that's just life. You just got to get on, deal with right. it, move on to the next thing, and don't don't let that emotion get in your way or, or use it to your advantage as an energy. Um, so yeah, I think back in the day, I think there was a couple of moments where I just thought, why am I talking to somebody who um, you know <laughs> builds aquariums? Um, right. You know, and and that was an amazing introduction that that sort of led to lots of other things and lots of positive things came out of it. So really pleased that I did. Um, I think it's about learning something from every conversation. You know, if you don't yeah. go into it looking to sell things. Uh, and I don't, you know, um, I, I go in looking to learn something from that other person, whether it's about what they do, whether it's what they can, you know, their experiences, what mistakes have they made that I can avoid. Never come away from a conversation empty handed. That, that's when you fail at networking. Yeah. You come away having to learn something, just listen, be curious. Yeah. And, and find something you can do to serve them. And it just kind of, it just, it's kind of the, the gravity that holds it together. Um, mm-hmm. It, you know, my heart of hearts, there are times where I question the process. Okay, what am I doing? Um, and, and I find that it's times when I'm tired, stressed, you know, at the end of a long week, it's like, oh, man, was this, you know, was that worth it? Uh, were those worth it? Could I, did I need to do those? Um, but, you know, I recently heard a quote, uh, Winston Churchill, so I assume you'll appreciate that. Um and his quote was, the future is unknowable, but the past should give us hope. And to me, that's a really powerful quote. And obviously he meant it in, you know, war times. And, and uh, um, but I think from the standpoint of networking, it's powerful because I don't know what's going to happen from meeting the next person that Simon connects me to or you connect, connect me to. I don't know. Um, but the past gives me hope that something's going to come from this. I don't know where it might be six, seven steps down the line. And it might be in a way that I didn't anticipate, um, didn't feel I needed at the time, whatever. Um, but something will come from it. And, um, I'm always pleasantly surprised, you know, with how I can serve people, um, as well as how people serve me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I try and introduce people where it makes sense. Try not to waste people's time by making introductions that don't work. But, you know, I mean, I caught up with with somebody who I'd, I'd introduced some um, connections to just this week, just yesterday. Um, and she's, she's you know, she's like one of the guys that I introduced her to. She's building an app with them and it's supporting her charity foundation. The other person I introduced her to is going to be an ambassador for her foundation over in the UK. Um, and do you know what? When I had that conversation with her, I was so happy that I've made a real difference in her life and mm-hmm. the other people's lives. So I've affected, you know, not just not just two people's lives. There's two people in a whole business that I've, they've impacted just by writing a couple of emails and introducing the right people together. And that starts to get addictive. Yeah. Um, it's an endorphin rush. 
because it is. It is. because you you know you're helping people. No, no matter what your no matter what your thing is, you you know like some some people enjoy having a have an alcoholic drink on a weekend. Me not so much. I'm not that. I'm not, I'll have one or two. That's not where I get my rush from. That's not you know some people go cave diving and all sorts of crazy things. Well, but it's exactly the same thing. It's just in a different world. Yeah. Um, you can network and put people together, and you start to see the dots connect. And it's like just putting a big jigsaw puzzle together. Um, right. And you solve that puzzle and and you, the connections you've made will will help you for the rest of your life. It's amazing. Yeah, it's I mean you create this you create this deep really unmeasurable reservoir of goodwill out there. Cuz this woman yeah. that you're talking about is, you know, I don't know how she's going to come back in your life. I don't know how it's going to serve you, but somehow or another it's going to. And it might yeah. be just her talking to somebody who talks to somebody else. And all of a sudden your names, um, you know, your names in an email that's going out and Hey, we need you. Um, yeah. whatever it might be. And it uh, doesn't, it's worked so many times in the past already. Like I've, I've not, you know, this, this, this guy's out there like yourself have been networking for a lot of years and must have some amazing contacts. I've only been doing this a year. Um, and I've, you know, I can generally, no matter who I'm talking to, there's generally at least one connection I can introduce them to. Oh, I need an investor. I need somebody who's in, involved in venture capital. I need somebody who's a business advisor. I need somebody who's a, a business coach or does LED lighting or solar panels or, or whatever it is. I know somebody who can do all that. Yeah. Like you just, and it's about trying to get them to open up as to what they need or, or spot those, those common solutions amongst the middle of it all it's it's fun it's 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 it is kind of like uh almost like a hobby but it's i'm yeah. getting paid to do it as well it's great well so you introduced me recently to um the woman who does led lighting here in the united states um and her name escapes me but we talked last week jessica. perhaps uh yeah jessica thank you um and um you know, it's funny. She she just dropped in the conversation. We do a lot of LED lighting for people who have large parking lots. And I just had a conversation earlier with uh, I had met a guy, got to know a guy whose family has a paving business. Um, that's what they do. They pave large parking lots, um, yeah. generally blacktop. And, um, you know, when I first met him, it's like, well, that's kind of a. You know, that's kind of an odd person to have in your network um in yeah. fact I, I i'd call them junk junk drawer contacts well the junk drawer in our kitchen she's got all sorts of crap in it that yeah. you don't want to get rid of but we don't really know what we're going to do with um and that's what he was um but you know you made me think of that um well let, let's switch gears here real quick you know um what are you up to how can the audience help you um how can they get a hold of you so yeah, I'm I'm pretty much active on LinkedIn most days, um, Monday to Friday. Obviously, I'm I'm over here on UK time, but feel free to reach out by LinkedIn. Um, my email address is uh, paul.b at tmac.ai. Anybody who wants to drop me an email, like my door is generally open. If somebody wants to drop me a line and let me know um, how they think I can help them, or if they would just want to have a, a virtual coffee at some point. For me, obviously, um, my main business is around the contact center environment and customer services. So, you know, if anybody out there's uh, got contacts in that world, then I'm more than happy to speak to them and, and let them know how we can impact in that world and using data science and machine learning to help people make better decisions faster. Um, but other than that, you know, if you, you, you're not sure how to, how to network with people, you want to up your LinkedIn game, you know, I'm more than happy to give most people advice. Um, providing I've got the time to do it. <laughs> My right. diary seems to get busier and busier every week, right? But, um, you know, I'll always give people some uh, some help where I can. So, you know, if, if there's anything I can do, please let me know. Okay, great. I appreciate your time today. No problem. Thanks for having me along, Frank. It's a, pre it's a pleasure. To wrap things up, remember, we're looking for some enterprising business types to join our team as franchisees of Amspirit Business Connections. Our franchisees work with entrepreneurs, sales representatives, and professionals in their area to help them become more successful through networking and the exchange of quality business referrals in a structured weekly morning meeting. This is a unique franchise opportunity, you see, because these meetings are in the morning. A successful business type or professional can add this franchise opportunity onto what they're already doing. Again, all of our franchisees do something else. For a couple hours in the morning, a few mornings a week, these franchisees work the Amp Spirit Business Connections model. 
the rest of the time, they're attorneys, accountants, realtors, coaches, and consultants of various kind. The wonderful thing is that not only do our franchisees realize a financial gain from operating the Amspirit Business Connections model, but the business networks that they build and develop become a great source of referrals for their primary business as well. Perhaps you know someone, perhaps you are that someone. Whatever the case, to learn more about the Amspirit Business Connections franchise opportunity, please contact me using the email in the show notes or the one we provide at the end of this program. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.